Hey guys, so Ethan's going to be eight months old really, really soon, and we've been doing a ton of fun things to practice those gross and fine motor skills that are so important for this stage of his life. And if you're like me and have a little one at home that you would like to practice those gross and fine motor skills, then this is the video for you. Welcome back to Mommies of Jen. I'm Vanessa. And I'm Samantha. And we make videos on how to teach, love, and care for your child. So if you have little ones at home, then please go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell so that you can continue to get more videos like this. So Ethan's going to be eight months really, really soon. Yay. And um, as bittersweet as this is, I'm already thinking about the things that I could do as a parent to better help him in this developmental stage. This is the age that they really, really begin to blossom in sitting up, in pulling themselves up to stand, in crawling. And you know what happened the other day, Vanessa? He actually pulled himself up to stand Aww. by himself. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to, uh, so we do have a couple of ideas for how to practice those gross and fine motor skills here mm -hmm. that we're, we'll be sharing with you today. So before we begin, let's actually just quickly define the difference between fine motor skills and gross mm -hmm. motor skills. Um, so fine motor skills usually involves dexterity, right? Like that hand-eye coordination, using mm -hmm. smaller muscles of your body, such as your finger, um, picking things up putting things in particular places. Those are all fine motor skills. Mm -hmm. And gross motor skills are those that encompass the larger muscle groups. So things like sitting up, um, pulling up to stand, crawling, those all use the gross motor skills. So the one thing to keep in mind about this H group um, is to have your kids dressed comfortably. Mm -hmm. That's a big one because sometimes I see um, little babies in these like huge outfits that don't allow for movement, um, and that is kind of just sometimes hindering their ability to move and explore comfortably. Mm -hmm. And you know, Vanessa, it's so funny that you mentioned that because I get teased a lot for Ethan being in a onesie most of the time. Most of the time, he's in a white onesie. <laughs> oh, that's really all he's in. He, I, especially right now with summer over I mean, here he's not in New going York. To prom. But he's in a white onesie <laughs> because he's the most comfortable yes. and it's simple. He doesn't need any of the extra things to be adorable. He's adorable by itself and I usually have him barefooted. Mm -hmm. So um, those are something that's really important because if he's barefooted and if he's not wearing pants, then he actually is, it's actually a safety yeah. tip too so that when he's crawling and when he's trying to stand, he's not slipping all over the place. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because both of my kids were barefoot a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the reason was just for safety because every time they had their socks on, they would slip and they would accidentally, you know, hit their face or um, sometimes when they have pants, um, you want them to have exposed knees, especially yeah. when they're learning how to crawl, so that there could be more grip yeah. um, with the floor. Yeah. So comfortable clothing and no shoes would be our very first tip in order to begin um, to encourage those fine and gross motor skills. Mm -hmm. So another tip is to give your child wide open spaces for them to practice that new acquired skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So wide open spaces are very, very important. Um, we have a coffee table and when Jade was learning how to crawl and how to move around, we actually put the coffee table in our bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, and she just had a wide open space. Again, that was also for safety. I didn't want her to like, um, before she learned how to stand up, um, I didn't want her to accidentally fall um, and just hit herself um, when she was learning how to walk. You know how sometimes they'll take two steps and then they fall forward. Um, so I just got rid of the coffee table and I got rid of anything that was um, occupying too much space. And then once she mastered um, some of these skills, everything kind of just went back to normal. Mm -hmm. So try to try to keep the space as clutter free as possible. I'm in an apartment, um, so our our situation is a little different than Vanessa's, but to but because of that I'm even more mindful of what do we bring in the house and what do we really not need in order to give the baby the most important thing that he needs right now as far as play goes which is wide open space. Yeah. 
So the next tip would be to offer opportunity for baby to move forward. And how do we do that? By finding toys that kind of move away from them. Mm -hmm. um, let it be a ball, or I have this nice little dog and cat that um, it rolls away from them every time they try to catch it. Mm -hmm. And what this does is encourages movement. Um, so they're going to be working on those gross motor skills by trying to chase these toys. Mm -hmm. So Ethan has this little, um kind of like a car and it comes with a string and he just loves playing with it and every time he touches it, it it's on wheel so it moves forward so he has to chase it mm -hmm. I love that yeah. <laughs> yeah so another thing that we've been doing a lot in these past few few weeks since it's so hot here in New York is we've been visiting the playground early in the morning so because we go early in the morning we we miss the afternoon top sun hour which is too hot for little baby and also the park and the playground is pretty empty and because it's pretty empty he's able to explore the playground in a way that he wouldn't be able to do if there were a lot of big kids running around so during our playground time we get to do things like tap on the different um, jungle gym games and just listen to the different sounds and because and really just explore is he um, standing up on some of these yes. uh, bars and stuff so I uh, assisted he's able to stand up assisted and tap on things and and really just um, take it all in with the nature around him um, and really learn cause and effect right like when I tap on this it makes this sound when I move this this moves um, which is really great for hand-eye coordination and also just working those muscles and practicing standing as well. You say working those muscles, I picture uh, Ethan lifting weights. <laughs> <Soon>. <laughs> So the next step would be to practice their pincher grasp. Mm -hmm. And this involves um, hand-eye coordination. These are things such as giving them finger food where they get to pick it up and they have to bring mm -hmm. it to their mouth. It also involves um, like little games where they have to sort things and you can give them little, even little beans, right? Um, make sure that it's always under adult supervision because you don't want them accidentally putting these things in their mouth. Mm -hmm. but. Um, just practicing, practicing picking things up and putting them in designated places. Mm -hmm. So what we have started doing at home is because he started solids, we've been giving him purees. We started off with completely only purees, but as he's getting better at eating and he's, <laughs> his, his digestive system is maturing, we've introduced finger foods. So things like bananas and sliced fruit cut safely and um, things like blueberries um, so what we do is blueberries is a perfect example so we squish up the blueberries and at first he really really struggled picking those little things up squashed up blueberries can you imagine how small they are and bringing them to his mouth without with enough accuracy to actually get food and he's gotten so much better at this guys and he's really able to do it um, so just giving them things like finger foods and small things to grasp is great for practicing the, the pincher grasp yep and that again is fine motor skills yeah so our next tip would be to do lots of games and lots of singing with your child, right? A lot of um, things like patty cake or peekaboo. These are all things that they're going to be encouraged to probably, you know, touch their eyes or mm -hmm. touch their nose. And you'd be surprised by like eight or nine months, they're able to um, mimic a lot of what you're doing. So they're practicing a lot of those um, fine and gross motor skills. Mm -hmm. Another really, really fun thing to do is mirror time. So get a mirror um, and put it on the floor at baby's eye level. And you can either do this as tummy time or you could stand them in front of the mirror or you can um, sit them in front of the mirror and it, they're able to have a, a self-awareness of their themselves and watch their movements and they hit the mirror and they can hear the sound that the mirror um, makes. And it's just really great overall um, time that they can spend. Yeah, and you want to be very careful with safety, right? Mm -hmm. So you never want to have like any big bulky toys that if they hit the mirror too hard, it can break. Mm -hmm. um, so you definitely want to be um, 
careful with that they actually sit, sell play mirrors mm -hmm. for kids mm -hmm. so these are um, perfect so that if they accidentally hit it too hard it's not going to shatter and break in front of them and they love it they love it. I know I love I love yeah, um, how Noah it. especially used to smile a lot yeah. at himself because they start to explore a lot of like areas yeah. of their um, of their face yeah. too or like their hands and if you sit behind them and you clap um, they get to see themselves clap mm -hmm. and they start to get excited about mm -hmm. all those things. They love themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright guys, so we want to hear from you guys. So what are some things that you guys do with your bubbles that practice those gross and fine motor skills? Comment below and let us know what you do. Please hit subscribe and ring the bell so that you can continue to get more videos like this. And we'll see you next time.